Welcome to Life Recovery Today with Stephen Arterburn. In the next half hour, you'll obtain insights and tools to transform your life using the biblical principles found in the 12-step program. We believe everyone can benefit from a life recovery experience because we all have struggles in life. Struggles with addictions, food, depression, anxiety, and relationships to name a few. You'll be encouraged to see how others have found a new way of life with hope for the future through life recovery. Your host is Steve Arterburn, founder of New Life Ministries and Women of Faith, author of over 100 books, and teaching pastor at Northview Church in Carmel, Indiana, one of the 20 largest churches in America. Steve is the co-editor of the Life Recovery Bible, the number one selling recovery Bible. With over 3 million copies sold, this is the Bible given to inmates by Prison Fellowship and the Pew Bible for the Salvation Army. Now here's Steve. Hi there, Steve Arterburn here, and welcome to Life Recovery Today. You know, we've been saying for a lot of time that recovery is for everyone. Well, it's not just for drugs and alcohol and all of that. It is for everyone in every situation that you're in. And here's what I say. If you don't like 12 steps for your growth program in character and spiritual growth, pick two or seven or four. Do something to grow. Well, on today's show, we're going to talk about how recovery can help us through a very, very painful experience for most called divorce. Now, I was just at an event and I was so excited to see John and Lisa Bevere. When I was previously married, my previous wife's best friend called and told me that she was having an affair. And then the doors of the plane closed and I was off to Colorado to meet with the Beveres. Oh, I wanted off that plane so badly. I didn't want to go to dinner. But John and Lisa Bevere met with me. They went back to the hotel room. They prayed with me to be a forgiving person, a recovering person who could forgive and never be jealous of whatever is going to go on with my wife because I knew she was going to divorce me. I just knew it. And she did. Well, first I want to talk about my shame, the shame of divorce, and the impact that it has on all of us because it's really horrible. And I'm so grateful that when I was going to Saddleback, I got into divorce recovery. I recommend it for everyone. But we have a life recovery workbook specifically for recovery from people who are divorced. Now, let's give this a listen and a watch. We're going to go deeper into shame as it relates to divorce. Now, not everybody's been divorced, but a bunch of people have. And uh, I would like to say some things that might prevent you from going there. You know, a lot of people think, well, that's going to be the answer to all my problems. No, it won't be. Uh, and you never really fully divorce. You know, that's just, especially if there are kids. So I would do anything to try to convince you not to get a divorce. But in the Christian community, divorce has a stigma. And I, I got to tell you, I, my uh, previous wife was uh, unfaithful. And when I confronted her, uh, she left. And it was just the saddest time of my life. But I felt like I needed to wear a big red letter S for shame because I felt so much of it. I, I felt the S would meant second class Christian. S, sorry person. S, well, I'm not going to give you any more S words, but it was bad. It was bad. And I just felt so out of place. Imagine this. Church I was going to, uh, there was the, the couples group that met uh, on a Sunday morning or a Sunday evening. And it was fantastic. I mean, people were just excited to be alive, sharing all their life experiences. And guess what happened? When I got divorced, I was no longer welcome there, nor did I feel comfortable there. And there was a little class that was being held down in the basement, literally in the boiler room where the divorced people met. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's the truth. Horrible, 
horrible uh, feeling of look where I was and now look where I am. And the sad thing is that you can take that kind of shame and you can play it out and you end up um, with somebody that folks would say, man, that's a real shame that you're with somebody. So what we want to do is, first of all, we want to recognize the shame. And having a broken marriage can be very shameful, depending on the kind of church you go to and all of that. But we want to realize we have these feelings of shame so that we can do something about the feelings of shame that we have. Secondly, I want to do something that restores my relationship with God or heals my relationship with God or make sure that I'm right with God. You know, when the divorce happened, I said this to God, God, you never promised me that you'd protect me from problems. And you never said that just because I was in ministry that you would prevent some kind of disaster like this divorce. But you could have. You could have done it. And I really was bugged because even though he never promised it, he could have intervened and stopped it. What a sad thing if I don't resolve those feelings about God. And you know, God can handle you saying something that's true because God already knows you feel it in your heart. So you don't need to apologize for that. So we must deal with that, developing that whole relationship with God based on truth. I may feel like a second class Christian, but I'm not. I may feel like I'm an outcast, but in the grand scheme of things and under God's guidance, I am not that person. I need to develop um, a different perspective on life. Yep, there's some brokenness here but I'm not broken forever. Yes, there's some wounds, but I don't have to be wounded forever. You know, the worst thing that could ever happen is you get a divorce and you wear it for the rest of your life. You know, I've been divorced, but when it happened, it was everything and I felt it so deeply. But now, unless I'm doing a video on shame and divorce, I hardly ever even talk about it or think about it because God is a God of restoration. So we we want to we want to realize that we don't want to be living out a label or a diagnosis for the rest of our life. Now here's the other thing. If you're feeling shame, it really isn't about other people and what they think or feel. It's about what you think and feel about yourself. And so we have to start talking to ourselves differently. We have to start memorizing some scripture that truly solidifies the value that we have before God, we have to get some feedback from folks. I've been in counseling all my life. I always will. Some people think I should go more than I do, but I'm telling you, you, you won't regret to get the counseling that you need. And then finally, so often we, we feel so bad about ourselves. We're looking for something to elevate our mood and we get involved in a relationship way, way too soon. Don't do that. Um, get in an all men's group if you're a man. Get in an all women's group if you're a woman. Go to coffee with folks, same sex, and, and, and connect with them. Share with them your life so that you're not desperate, so that you're not hooking up or getting with somebody else way, way too early in the process. You know, I would say just give it at least a year before you even consider going on a date with somebody else or being interested in somebody else. You need time to heal. So that's it. Divorce and shame. Thanks for listening. If you would like a copy of this little 12-step life recovery workbook to help you heal from divorce, I think it could really help you. Also, Healing is a Choice is the book that I wrote after uh, divorce, and, and it's got 10 choices that you can make that initiate and sustain the healing that God wants for you. And if you want any of that, 1-800-NEW-LIFE. It's hard to find a trusted friend when you're in crisis. Someone who's been there and understands, but who also has the training and skill to give you practical help. Family, friends, and churches want to help, but often they're not equipped to care for those dealing with problems like addiction and pornography, infidelity, anger, depression. 
New Life Ministries is here to provide help and hope in life's hardest places. We're not focused on making people feel better. We're focused on helping people do the work that will help them be better. At New Life, we have resources available to help you, like books, DVDs, CDs, workshops, and our network of licensed counselors. If you need help, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE and begin your new life today. Welcome back. You know what statistics say about how many marriages fail? A lot. And I don't know what the exact number is, but I got to tell you something. It's a lot. And second marriages and blended families, it's even worse. Well, there's a path and a process for healing. Here it is. I hope it's helpful. Love getting to be here with you. And I hope that something I say is going to be helpful to you. We've been going through or we're starting our series on recovery from divorce. And we're going to use the 12 steps. And I'm just providing some introduction to that. And because divorce is tough and it's complex and everybody comes from a different place. And uh, we talked in the original series of, you know, uh, what our goal is. It's transformation. It's restoration. And the things that we need, you know, we need some humility, honesty, things like that, faith, courage. But we end up, wherever we are, with a reality that has to be dealt with. And I want to get us out of the negative reality into a much better place. I know this. When we're divorced, especially in the Christian community, there is separation. Uh, so uh, often, everything's all about the married couples, and we're part of that, and then you get divorced, and now you go, what in the world am I going to do now? Because all these people that I counted on, all these people I loved being with, they're not there for me now. I was so fortunate that there were some couples who decided they weren't going to do that. And every Sunday we had this little group called Couples and Steve. <laughs> yeah, they let me be who I was. Because you see, not only are we separated from others, but we're angry. Sometimes we're angry at God that he didn't prevent it. He didn't heal it, whatever. We're angry at ourselves. We're angry at the other person. A lot of anger. And then... There's a lot of shame. Uh, there were shaming things done to me. One of my best friends, a guy that, I mean, we trained for marathons together. And he says to a friend of mine who told me, uh, yeah, he said, anybody ought to be able to keep their marriage together. Wow. Boy, that was painful. Because I had fought hard for that marriage. We end up in a place uh, where we can be jealous of the person that we were married to. Look at all the stuff they're doing. And here I am. It's just me. Victor Oliver, uh, my first publisher, he said to me, Steve, I just want to encourage you. Do not allow yourself to be jealous of your ex because it will lead you down a path of bitterness, resentment, and anger. What a, what a great piece of advice that was. So I'm passing it on to you. We end up in a place where we feel abandoned and, and sometimes shunned literally pushed out of the church because, uh, well, you know, maybe we didn't do it too well. Maybe it was our fault, whatever. It doesn't matter when it comes to restoration. God wants you restored. You might have had 18 affairs and that caused a resort, the, the divorce. It's time to get on the bandwagon of restoration and healing. God loves you. And, uh, you know, you could live in all of that shame. Or you could say, wait a second, this is the very thing that Christ died for, and I don't want to live in it anymore. There's no advantage to anybody for you walking around thinking that I've got to be the outcast of the church, I've got to be um, the person, the bad guy, all that kind of stuff. No, God wants you learn, uh, repent, Make, make restorative things, make a restoration attempt, make amends, make restitution, these kinds of things, and then let's get on with the process of growth. Now, in that process, I think it's always great to have a group. 
And uh, in both the Life Recovery Bible and in this workbook, there's a little guide. Uh, this one's smaller than the one in Life Recovery Bible, but there's a guide on, you know, how could you have come along with another person and lead a group in uh, divorce recovery uh, it, using the 12 steps as your path. And so what we want to do is we want to take these 12 steps and we want to use them to, to kind of illuminate what's underneath all of this that has happened on the surface. You might say, yeah, I'll tell you what's uh, underneath it was he, the guy betrayed me. That's what was un underneath it. Well, look, how did you pick that person? And, and, and maybe if we could figure out, you know, that below all of the things that were going on up here, I had a fantasy dream that all my problems would be taken care of or whatever it is. Or I was an enabler or I didn't react or do what I could in the early stages. And so we go below the stuff to find the real stuff that led to this. Now, to do that, if I'm going to heal from anything, I need some spiritual truth. Uh, I don't need uh, new age thinking. I need some spiritual truth. truth. Like, just like the verse, it says, confess your sins one to another and pray for each other that you might be healed. Or how about this? If you're at the altar worshiping and somebody has something against you, put that uh, altar, that, that offering down, that sacrifice, go to that person and make it right with them and then come back and worship. So let's just say you were unfaithful and uh, you got a divorce. Maybe you left the person after being unfaithful and married the person uh, that you, know, you wanted to be with. Now somebody's got something against you. So what does God want you to do? Don't, it's not that you shouldn't be coming to church. It's that you need to go make it right and then come to church. Uh, that, that's what I think God wants, is restoration. The, the, divorce isn't the unpardonable sin. It's just one of those things that when you go through it, it's so hard and so painful. You don't want anybody uh, to ever go through it. I don't. But we, we've got to have these spiritual truths. We've got to go through some exercises and we need to go through a process. And that really is what these 12 steps are all about. It's a process to go through. We go through this process and we get out of this bondage of shame and negative stuff and all of that to a place where we start to accept my reality and what God has for me. And we can experience healing and serenity and peace of mind. And a peaceful heart. Um, I, I began the last session with Jeremiah 6.14. Jeremiah 6.16 6, says to stop at the crossroads and look around. And search for the old godly way. Walk in its path. And you will find peace for your soul. So that's what we're going to do. And to that end, we're going to start with the first step. It's right out of the Life Recovery uh, Workbook for Divorce and the Life Recovery Bible. Now, this, this workbook, it's just a Bible-centered approach to going through some things that can dredge out the depths of character, reveal some of the things beneath the surface that need to be dealt with, might have even caused, led to, or influenced the divorce to begin with. Now, I want to recommend some other resources for you. There's another book, Healing is a Choice. I may refer to it from time to time. And Take Your Life Back. Healing is a Choice. There are 10 choices. And I wrote this with my wife uh, after my divorce, trying to focus on what are the 10 choices that both of us went through when she had to recover from uh, the same kind of situation that, that I did. And so what were those choices? And then take your life back is really all about um, whatever you're going through, not letting it come to control you. And, and rather than uh, always trying to fix someone else, but really working your side of the, tr the street to recover no matter what happens. And so all of this leads us to this first step of the 12, which says this, we admitted 
that we were powerless over our problems and that our lives had become unmanageable. What's that powerlessness mean? Does it mean I'm out of options? I'm helpless? No. It just means that on my own, I experience some powerlessness that under my own strength, things aren't going to change. So I might as well accept that. And then the other part of that, that my life is unmanageable. Uh, you know, if it's totally manageable, then would you have ever gotten the divorce? Maybe there's some things that have happened since that have really caused you to feel overwhelmed and you know that you need some help. Well, first question I like to ask is what led up to this relationship that wasn't healthy or and it wasn't sustainable? What was it in me that, uh, that married someone that I could not make it work with, or, I, or married someone that would not be loyal to me. That's something that obviously I would have changed that if I had known it was broken within me because you want to pick the right person. And if you're in a divorce, either you weren't the right person or you didn't pick the right person. Of course, we can't predict everything when we marry somebody. But that's something that well, you could come to the conclusion that you have an extreme limitation. The extreme limitation was, I couldn't predict this. Um, I can't fix myself. I can't even accurately see myself. It's an extreme limitation. And I, um, I can't really fully know someone else and fully healthily connect with that other person. Otherwise, I would have done it. What a great thing to see that I have an extreme limitation. Because when I see that, then I'm saying, you know, I need a new strategy. I just, and that's really all it is. That's what recovery is. It's picking a new strategy. Rather than thinking I can get good enough, strong enough, wise enough to get out of this, I'm saying, nope, that is not going to happen. I just need to get into the process where it's not dependent on me. My extreme divine limitation leads me to a place where I can move forward realistically. Look at this, um, this verse, 2 Corinthians 4, 7 through 12. This is right out of the Life Recovery Bible. It says this, or I'll just go 7 through 10. We now have this light shining in our hearts. But we ourselves are like fragile clay jars containing this great treasure. This makes it clear that our great power is from God and not from ourselves. We are pressed on every side by troubles, but we're not crushed. We're perplexed, but not driven to despair. We're hunted down, but never abandoned by God. We get knocked down, but we're not destroyed. Through suffering, our bodies continue to share in the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be seen in our bodies. So we reach a point where we say, I've got some limitations. God doesn't have them. I'm coming to see it. All the self-effort, the self-will, none of that is going to be as powerful as God's strength and me living in God's will. And I've got some good company of people that have experienced extreme limitation. Paul in Romans 7, 18 said, I want to do what's right, but I cannot do what's right. Now, if Paul has limitations, what's it for us to admit that we have some? So we want to come alongside each other. We want to help each other to see and to encourage whatever needs to be encouraged and help the other person see and allow them to help me see what I can't. What's my anger like? What's the extent of my anger and is this anger I'm experiencing really tapping into some really deep stuff that occurred earlier in my life? What are my fears? Am I afraid of the future? Uh, am I afraid of the plans uh, that are there and I might not find them? All sorts of anxieties and fears. The darkness. What are the sources of light that I'm missing out on? Uh, can I... Look at the scripture. Am I listening to anybody help me? What's my sadness like? Am I feeling it? Or am I ignoring it? Are there, are there some patterns and cycles and trends that always end up in the same place where I'm not, not getting where I want to go? 
And when I look back at my past, was there a child in my past, me that was ignored or abused or so built up that nobody could meet those expectations? What we're trying to do here is just simply say, I accept my limitation. And um, I'm, I want to watch what God can do. I want to look back and see that God has done some great things. And I want to believe that while I'm powerless, I'm going to move toward the power that is powerful. And, and when I look at my lack of manageability in my life, I'm going to believe that I can get all that back, not under my own power, but working with God, not against God. So now is the time for a godly response. And there is a, an amazing power in realizing my own powerlessness and my own limitation. That's really what the first step is all about. We just admitted that when it comes to these problems, I have not had the power. I don't have it to fix it. And I'm, I'm just, I'm just going to face the fact that my life is not manageable. You know what that is? That's seeing the reality of my life. Admitting that if I could have fixed it, I would have. If I could have made it better, I would have. I didn't. And so now I'm going to do something really healthy. But first, I have to admit, I have an extreme limitation. I want to thank you for joining me. We're going to go right into step two the next time we're together. And we'll just take this process, we'll grow together, and hopefully you'll develop some insight into some things that will lead you into a fulfilling and better life where nothing like this is ever going to happen again. Life Recovery Workbook for Divorce, 100 Days to Freedom from Shame. If you call 1-800-NEW-LIFE and you ask for these, uh, I think they could really help you in whatever it is you're going through, but especially for divorce. Um, we love you. We care about you. And we want the very, very best for you. And there are so many other life recovery products than these. If you've never seen them, they give you a deeper, richer experience in recovery. But let me tell you, Terry Ward helps life recovery groups start and flourish Call her, 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Say, Terry, what could I do to start a group in my church? You will not regret it. And the number, 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Also, if you ever feel like you're about to relapse, that's the same number. We'll help you, 1-800-NEW-LIFE. God bless you. It's a great day for recovery today. Thanks for joining us for Life Recovery Today with Stephen Arterburn. We hope this program has helped you integrate God's truth and wisdom into your recovery journey. This program is brought to you by New Life Ministries, and it's your support that keeps this program on the air. When you contact us for any reason, be sure to let us know that you watch on NRB. Call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE or go to liferecoverytoday.net. Please join us again next week for more Life Recovery Today.